Hi, I'm Paul McGowan, and welcome to Ask Paul. Let's see what somebody wants to ask me, and I'll see if I can't answer it. Ned in Los Angeles asks, how do you balance out your cost of components versus sound quality when designing a new product? Ah, very good question. Every company is different. I can only answer for our company. And for the last 45 years, we have had a pretty, a pretty good formula for doing it. Now, the cost of our products, what you pay as a retail, is a fairly strict function of the total cost of the product with a, a margin that we put over it so that we can actually operate the business and our dealers can operate their business. And we hope that after all is said and done, that we can cover our expenses. So if you, if you look at a, a company and you try and figure out, you know, what are your expenses? How do you do all this? Well, we spend, geez, well over a million dollars a year at PS Audio with our engineering department. That, that's a lot of money. That A million dollars a year is, well, it's more than a million, but call it a million dollars a year is greater than the entire retail, or the, the entire, is greater than the entire sales revenue of a number of companies in the audio industry. And that's just what we spend on engineering and R&D. And so you, you might want to take some of that into consideration when you were pricing your products, but we don't. We just say, you know, we're going to take this particular group of components and the labor that goes into it, put an adder onto it, and that's the price. So whatever you see a PS Audio product, you'll know that that same adder has gone in to that multiplies it up and we've calculated it out so that's enough to run the business and enough for our dealers to make money. Now, how do we do it on a specific product? Well, one of the first things we do is if it's not an all out assault, and we've had a few of those where we just say, we're just going to go ahead and design something and see where it lands. Generally, we will think in terms of a price point that we're trying to reach or a category. We, we rarely hit it, <laughs> but the Stellar series is a great example. So we have a series of products that are far more affordable than our Perfect Wave series. So our Perfect Wave series runs from like four to $7,000 retail, right? And that's currently our, our, our highest end products. The Stellar series, we wanted to make products that were not exactly entry level, but something that customers who couldn't afford the five, six, seven thousand dollar range, that they could get into a PS audio system where music was not compromised, quality is not compromised, but they can get into it for 1500 bucks. Something below 2000 and above 1000. That was our goal. Okay. So the very first thing we do is we say, well, depending on the product, where are we going to put our money, right? And there are some prerequisites. You have to have a chassis. I can't build products that aren't in boxes for a number of safety reasons and electrical reasons, EMI reasons, et cetera, right? You got to have a chassis. So the very first thing we did in Stellar, as an example, is we spent six months or so of a lot of time, energy, and engineering trying to figure out how to build a quality chassis, finish it beautifully, but at a price that we could afford to put in all the good stuff that makes it sound right. Now, that was a real challenge. We wanted to get the, the chassis, had to be of a certain quality or won't make a PS Audio product, but we wanted to get that chassis such that we had enough left over to put the good stuff into the product. So we finally achieved that. Then we said, all right, let's take an amplifier. And now we know that we have this much to spend on the chassis, and that gives us this much to spend on the amplifier. And it's just years of experience. You, you know there are certain things you can't do. For instance, in Stellar, we can't have big 
expensive heat sinks because the chassis doesn't allow for that. Therefore, we have to have more efficient means of delivering power, and that narrows the field down. And, and then, of course, it has to sound right. We're not willing to compromise sound quality for any reason, period. So it's really just a trade-off. You, you have to hear certain things we have to have. This gives you this region, and you use your skill, your ears, and your expertise to get everything else right. And you might have to sacrifice this or that to get the sound quality that you want. And, and we have. We've, we've, in some cases, put on uh, lower, lower priced, I call it jewelry, audio jewelry on the outside. We, we, we had to cut back, instead of the fancy schmancy connectors on the back, we went with good high quality ones because there is a trade-off I'm willing to live with as long as they're good quality if I can now afford a better capacitor inside that makes it sound better. So it's just a series of trade-offs and balances and using your ears to make the final decision. Hope that answers your question. Uh, thanks for asking, and I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Mm -hmm.